So I just saw Annihilation, and it was, hmm. This is the second film that Alex Garland has directed, with his first being Ex Machina. And just like that one, I have some mixed feelings about it. There's a lot that this film does very well, and a lot that makes it a unique experience that many will be able to enjoy, but there is also quite a lot holding it back. It has some very interesting concepts that we get to see play out. I really love a lot of the ideas in the film, but its presentation is really inconsistent. Now, first of all, you probably shouldn't even watch the trailer because it's kind of misleading. This film is more or less an adventure, fantasy, drama, suspense kind of movie, but it's being marketed as some kind of action horror film. And yeah, there are action horror elements and scenes to this, but you shouldn't really go into this movie with those genres as your expectation. For one thing, this movie really takes its time, and although I would love to be praising the film for that, unfortunately it was fairly detrimental. Like, holy fuck did this movie take a a long time to get shit going. The first half an hour of this film was legitimately boring, and it didn't help that the dialogue was so poorly written. It was really difficult to care about most of the characters that they introduced, and it was pretty difficult to fully understand the logic behind exactly what they wind up doing, which I'll get into once I start spoiler talking a bit. Many of the performances in this movie were surprisingly bad, and in ways that I'm not even sure I can blame the actor for. Natalie Portman, Oscar Isaac, and Jennifer J. Jason Leigh are all actors that I really enjoy, but for some reason Alex Garland wanted them all to be acting really low and held back. Now for the context of Oscar Isaac's character it totally makes sense, but for Natalie Portman and Jennifer Jason Leigh it just seemed like I was getting distractingly poor performances from actors I usually love. The way they act in this film makes it kind of difficult to buy their characters. I don't believe anything that Jennifer Jason Leigh says in the film, and again I'm not even sure I can blame her for how it turned out. It just seemed like some strange decision being made for the film. Now mind you, this is the type of movie where perhaps there is some sort of explanation for this. Not gonna spoil anything, but there is some potential for some fan theories. But putting that speculation aside, it was a very distracting decision that didn't really improve the film. The movie is also incredibly fucking ugly, which is strange because there are parts of this movie that look fantastic, but most of the film has this disgusting color palette, and not in a way like Enemy or Sweeney Todd where it can still look disgusting but aesthetically pleasing at the same time, there was just something about this movie that looked really gross and unprofessional, especially everything that takes place before the outdoor scenes. Again, perhaps there is some sort of intentional symbolic reasoning for this, but otherwise it was just a distracting choice that didn't really improve the quality of the film. The soundtrack was fairly well done, although a little repetitive. Every scene that included that song Helplessly Hoping by Crosby, Stills, and Nash was awesome, and that particular song added a lot to the experience of the movie, with the sequences themselves having some great performances and directing to back it up. Now you might be wondering why I've both trashed and praised the acting from Natalie Portman in the same review, and that's because, like I said, the presentation of this film is incredibly inconsistent. Almost every single aspect of this entire movie has parts that I absolutely love and parts that I absolutely hate. So let's just get into spoiler territory so I can be more specific. If you don't want any spoilers, click to this part in the video, there's your warning, 321. Now I mentioned poorly written dialogue earlier, so I think I should probably give some examples. The film has quite a few annoying and unnecessary lines that only wind up making parts of it feel more cliched. Like that one girl saying, it was a trick of the light, no, it was a trick of the light. That was unbearable. You realize you can just replay the footage, right? Then there's that awful line where the other girl says, could you imagine being attacked by a creature and you're terrified and in pain and that's the only part of yourself that winds up living on? I wouldn't want that for myself. Yuck. The first half of that line is just so forced with how meaningful it's trying to be. It's the kind of thing where you can no longer see the character and you're just hearing words from the writer. And then immediately it's just finished off with the most redundant thing I've ever heard. I wouldn't want that for myself. You don't say! And yeah, the actor's delivery didn't help much either. Then there's the whole opening of the film. I don't see why we needed to start the film after most of the events of the film had taken place already. Like that whole interrogation aspect where they're like, yeah, you're clearly the last survivor of this thing that's happened, why don't you tell us all about it? Is that not just cliched garbage? Could we not have just gotten right into the story? What did we gain from this decision? Why do you want so bad for this movie to include derivative and uninspired tropes? There is so much about this movie that is refreshing and unique. Why did you want so much of it to feel so cliched? Then there's the part where they all black out for four days, which never happens again the entire movie. It would be pretty cool if their memory slowly 
slowly deteriorated over the course of the film, but for the rest of the movie they all seem to agree on the timeline of events pretty well, as evidenced by characters realizing that other characters lied to them previously and stuff like that. That one blackout just seems like a really blatant writing excuse. It's as if they didn't want people to think about the process of walking into the shimmer, because if we saw them walk in we might be asking some really basic questions, like why don't you just hang out on the edge of the shimmer? Like you can still go inside it without going really far away, right? Just hang out close to safety while you're still figuring shit out. I know that one of the objectives is to get to the lighthouse, but are you not also trying to study what takes place inside? Why didn't they bring a long ass rope on their journey? It seems like a lot of government money is going into this expedition, and you've stated that everybody that goes in there never comes back. Why are you just sending five people in again without trying to prevent anything that could have happened the other times that people were sent in? Like clearly something is happening where they're dying or getting lost, but instead of starting future expeditions with any kind of preventative measures, no, instead just do the exact same thing with new people, but go in with a, oh, it'll be different this time kind of attitude. Yeah, that'll work. It just seemed like there was a lot they could have done but didn't, and them blacking out only once was just a way to get you not to think about it. Also, why are all of your mutations just so incredibly convenient? Like, oh no, my intestines are moving around, and so are my fingerprints. But it was never anything that we'd be able to see as a constant throughout the film. Like, no one's face started moving around or anything. It was all just shit that could either appear or disappear depending on whether or not the scene needed it to be there. The special effects in this film were, like everything else, very inconsistent. Some of the creature effects looked like shit. That bear hybrid turned out awesome. The wall of the shimmer looks like a shitty gasoline spill. But that floating orb entity at the end was just so highly detailed and textured. What a strange fucking film. So yeah, I really love a lot about this movie, both conceptually and presentation-wise, but I also think that a lot of it doesn't work very well at all. If this film was cut from two hours to 90 minutes, it might have been a lot better. Not just for the sake of overall runtime, but a lot of the aspects that I take issue with in this film don't really even need to be there. Not all of them, obviously, but for quite a few of them, it's like they wouldn't really be missing if they were just removed. Would I recommend this film? Yes. Despite all the issues I have with it, it is still very special, and it's something that's been kind of growing on me as I think about it. There's a lot that is holding back this film, but in the end, I enjoyed myself and I want to see it again. And I'm giving this one a 6 out of 10.